Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to talk about multiplying fractions. Uh, if you watched our previous video about adding and subtracting fractions, the good news here is this one's actually easier. Uh, with adding and subtracting fractions, you need to get a common denominator first before you can do those problems. Um, but multiplying, you don't have to do any of that. You can just simply multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and you're finished. Uh, so in one like this, where we have 2 over 3 times 5 over 7, then we just simply multiply straight across. 2 times 5 will give us 10 on the top, and on the bottom, 3 times 7 will give us 21. Now, as always, you want to look for any common factors. 10 and 21 don't share any common factors besides 1. So we would not reduce this in any way, and we would leave it 10 over 21. Uh, for the second one, 3 over 4 times 8 over 11. Again, we go straight across. 3 times 8 will give us 24. On the bottom, 4 times 11 gives us 44. Now what you may notice is that these are divisible by some common things. So these are both divisible by 4, so I could go ahead and divide each part by 4. We're just reducing it uh, to the smallest terms, lowest terms. So that would give us 6 on top and 11 on the bottom, and that would be our answer. I want to talk real quick about another way to do this, uh, just looking at simplifying in a different place. So let's say we have 3 over 4 times 8 over 11 again. And what I do, instead of looking at 24 and 44, which may be slightly bigger numbers than we're dealing with over here, um, if I look here, I can find that 8 and 4, because 1 is on top and 1 is on the bottom, and we're multiplying, this is not true of adding, but when we're multiplying, and you have fractions next to each other, we can reduce in this step at the very beginning. So 8 over 4, I can reduce both of these by 4 common factor. So this would become a 2 if I divide by 4, and if I divide this 4 by 4, I get 1. And so now you can see going straight across with these smaller numbers, 3 times 2 on the top will give us 6, and 1 times 11 on the bottom will give us the 11. So you can reduce before you get larger numbers at the end. So you can either reduce before you do the multiply, or you can reduce after you do the multiply. Uh, really up to you. I would say just kind of stick with whatever seems to work for you best. Uh, if you want to keep smaller numbers, you might consider reducing early in the problem instead of trying to reduce large things at the end. Our third problem here, so I have 6 over 5. Uh, notice that if I put a number next to a number in parentheses, that means multiply. So here I have 6 over 5 times negative 3 over 4. Uh, so here, notice that one of these is negative. And remember, with just like with regular whole numbers, when we multiply and the numbers have opposite signs, then it will be a negative answer. So I have a positive times a negative is going to give me a negative answer. I write that down first, then I don't have to worry about the sign. So we want to actively decide that first. Um, I can go straight across, or I can reduce if I see anything. Here I see that 6 is on top and 4 is on bottom, and they share a common factor. 3 and 5 do not. Um, but these are both divisible by 2. So if I divide 6 by 2, I can get 3. And if I divide 4 by 2, I get 2. So you have to reduce them by the same factor, right? Now going across, 3 times 3 on the top will give me 9. 5 times 2 on the bottom will give me 10. And it's already reduced for us. So that is good. Okay, let's look at this one. So now I have a negative 5 over 6 times a positive 3 over 4. So again, negative times a positive is going to be a negative. I decide that first. Uh, 5 times 3 would give me 15 on the top, and 6 times 4 would give me 24. Um, we do have some common factors, though, so maybe I don't do that. Maybe I go through and say 3 over 6. I could reduce both by 3, so dividing this by 3 would just give me a 1 there. Uh, reducing by 3 on the bottom would give me a 2 there. Going straight across, 5 times 1 is 5, and 2 times 4 would be 8. You can see also that deciding that sign early, then when you go in to reduce anything, you, maybe you scratch it up a bit and cross things out, write other numbers instead, you're not having to worry about finding, oh, what was negative, what was positive. That can be a good thing to already decide that right away. So looking at number 5 here, I have 9 times 7 over 8. So these are not both fractions, but I can make 9 into a fraction, right? We know that any 
whole number we can write as that thing over 1. So we want to think of this as 9 over 1 times 7 over 8. So you can see that the 9 now, if we're going straight across, the 9 is really only going to multiply the 7, right? It's not the whole thing 7 over 8 on top and bottom getting multiplied by 9. If we think of it 9 over 1, we have 9 times 7 is 63. And then 1 times 8 will give us 8, and we'll leave this. No common factors besides 1 with 63 and 8. And that one's positive, right? Because they're both the same sign. Now down here we have opposite signs. I have a positive times a negative, so my answer is negative. I write that down first. Uh, what we might want to do, I guess, though, if, you, if it helps you, let's rewrite the whole thing. We could say 7 over 12 positive times negative 4 over 1. Maybe you want to do that. Some people just go over here and they'll write a little over 1 where the negative 4 already is. But yes, we do know that positive times negative will give us a negative. And then if you want to reduce, you might see that 4 and 12 have common factors. They're both divisible by 4. So if I divide this by 4, I would get 1. If I divide this by 4, I would get 3. So now just multiply across. 7 times 1 on the top will give 7, and 3 times 1 on the bottom will give 3. And we already decided that our answer was negative. All right, last couple here. I have a negative times a negative. That's a lot of negative, but our answer is actually... That's right, it's positive, okay? When we multiply things that have the same sign, we're gonna end up with something positive. So, positive answer, I don't see anything common with one and 11 and six and three, uh, so I can't reduce, so I just go ahead and go straight across one times 11 being 11, and six times three being 18, positive 11 over 18. Last one here, negative 5 over 8 times negative 10. Before you get into the numbers, you might want to make a note in your head that negative times negative is going to be positive. If it helps you to rewrite that negative 10 as negative 10 over 1, I might recommend that. So negative 10 over 1, and then go from here, right? So negative times negative is positive. You could reduce here or not. Let me do this one. Maybe I don't see that 10 and 8 have a common factor, right? So let's just say I go straight across. So 5 times 10 will be 50 on the top. 8 times 1 is going to be 8 on the bottom. I look here. I didn't reduce earlier, so I really need to check if I don't reduce right away. i got to check the end. 50 over 8. They're both divisible by 2, aren't they? So if I divide both by 2... Then I will get half of 50, of course, is 25, and half of 8, 8 divided by 2, is 4. So get 25 over 4. Okay, so it's up to you. Reduce at the end, reduce before you do the multiply. Either way, it should work out. Always check that final answer and make sure you're not getting something that can be reduced. We definitely want to simplify when we can. So for multiplying fractions, you don't need a common denominator like you do with add subtract, which is good. That's less work on these. Um, whole numbers, you got to treat them as something over 1. 9 is 9 over 1. 10 is 10 over 1. It's easy. You just multiply straight across. You go with your intuition there. Of course, we want to simplify. Um, really, I would say at the same step in each time you do any multiplying of fractions, actively decide, is it going to be positive because the signs are the same, whether they're both positive or both negative, or is the answer going to be negative because I'm dealing with one positive and one negative number multiplied together? All right, hope this helped. Thanks for watching.